All right, good afternoon, everybody. So we got a special guest here in the shop. We got Mad Mike's O2 F350 7.3 diesel in the shop here. So I call him Mad Mike. He's actually a really, really nice guy, great guy. Mike's truck was giving him some running problems, some starting problems, and it just was not cooperating with him. So um, my former coworker knew I was into the 7.3 diesels from when we worked together. He never really got into working on them, but he knew I was into them. So he gave me a call, said, hey man, neighbor's father-in-law needs to work on his diesel. Are you interested? I said, absolutely, send them up. He needed the oil pan replaced. It was rotted real bad. It was leaking. Uh, training lines were leaking. They were rotted. Um, it had a starting issue, needed a cam sensor. And then, oh yeah, the brakes, the brakes were totally shot. Calipers frozen, rotors jump, pads jump. Um, the truck came here. And at first, we were like, okay, he wants to get rid of the truck. He's going to trade it in. Just let's get it not dumping oil everywhere. We'll jack the engine, take the training out. We'll do the oil pan on it. So, you know, I said to him, I was like, well, Mike, you know, we can do that. But the brakes are shot. You can't really drive it. Your four-wheel drive doesn't work right because of this. You know, what do you want to do? And we got to talking. He likes the truck. He's always liked the truck. It's got like 190 on it for mileage now. And he's like, I like the truck, you know, new trucks are, I mean, if you're buying a new 6.7 with these options, which would be like the platinum, this was like the platinum of the day, this was a Lariat. I mean, off the top of my head, you're buying a new 6.7 crew cab platinum. I mean, if you're not dumping all at 60 grand, you're probably getting a really good deal. Cause I'm thinking you're, you're close to 60 you know, K. We can, we can fix this truck. This truck could be whatever you want it to be. Well, he wanted lift kit. So we did. First, it was the maintenance. It was the oil pan, the brakes, the U double U joint, rebuilt the drive shaft, um, all the maintenance stuff on the truck. Just kind of went through the truck, got it tip top shaped mechanically, stopping good, driving good. So then it was lift kit, wheels, spacers, body work, flatbed, then custom mirrors, not really custom, you know, they're the new style mirrors, but they are custom because these ones we wired, the blinker works, the signal works, and yes, we put the lift kit on. If I'm not mistaken, it's a six inch, it's a rough country, nice lift kit. It's got the steering stabilizer set up in the front. Boom. So we did that. That was the next thing we did. Then he wanted the iron cross bumper. So we ordered that. They look good on the truck. At first when he got them, I was going to be honest, I was a little eh. But when you see the truck all together, you're like, yep, that looks good. So iron cross bumper, custom fog lights and the iron cross are all wired to the factory fog light switch. So they come on with the headlights. Um, I'll turn the lights on for you guys. I put these custom lights in the grill, drilled and, you know, mounted these inside the grill, wired them into the running lights. So got the grill, the headlights, the bumper, had to cut out the headlight housing in the back to fit these headlights in. Like when you do the uh, 05, 05 to 07 headlight conversions in these style diesels, you got to cut them out. So I had then to cut those. it was bodywork time. So basically what I did to that Dodge door that's sitting in the bed over there oh, and outer. So we got every, got every panel on every door. So they got this whole inner part here, and they got the outer part here, and he still hasn't gotten them. It's missing these, uh, supposed to have a nice weather strip that goes in the bottom. I gotta remind him, he's gotta order those, because if you don't have those when you drive, as you could tell, look at all the dirt, look at all the crud that's getting in there, but that's either here nor there. So then, after we did the front end work, we did inner and outer, every door, I did them with the door on the doors on the truck. I did not take the doors off the truck. The back doors were easier to do on the truck. The front doors were tough, especially working in there. Like crimping this edge and all the work that had to happen in there and all the body work. After that, it was we tough. did all the body work on the doors. Um, he went and bought the bed. I installed the bed. So we basically took the bed off 
We sandblasted the frame. It's dirty, but the flame got the frame got blasted like the Dodge did. Got painted. Uh, had to weld all those onto the bed. Had to drill the frame, mount the bed. Got the bed mounted. After that, we went to custom lighting. So we did add a decent amount of lighting to this truck. These we added. These come on with the reverse lights. You know, cut the body, mounted these in both sides. Then. Those lights up there, those lights got cu custom mounted, the ones between the lights on the body and that, uh, those rails there. Those lights got, you know, drilled and tapped, mounted into the headache rack. Um, that center light comes on with a switch. So that center light and those two lights come on with a switch. So the center light lights up the bed at night and those switches, or the, and then those other two lights light up, you know, behind the bed. So those got put in. And then we did the mirrors. So the mirror, like I said, they got installed and they got all wired. The heat works in them, the signal works in them, and the running lights work. So they're all functional. He didn't just want them bolted on the truck. He wanted them to work all the functions. You know, that was a whole job within it. I took the whole door apart. I ran all the wiring through this boot. And if I'm not mistaken, the switch for the backlights. So when that switch lights up, that means all these backlights, lights I was talking about in the back. So we wired up that switch there. That runs those. And then um, heated mirrors. If it's on, they're on. Off, on. And then I did mount, we did put a tuner in it. Here's the tune dial for his tuner. Mounted it right there real easy. You can tune it on the fly. So we put the nice Pioneer head unit in there. Uh, I had to cut around the surround to fit that in, mount that in. We put all Fosgate speakers in the doors because I had all the doors. like, Mike, you know what? We're doing the, we'll do backup camera, custom stereo. We'll do all the speakers. You know, did his hands-free. Here's the microphone for the hands-free, mounted all that. So I uh, basically had this whole interior apart, all the wiring for the, for the mirrors, for the stereo, everything, all done in the dash, all nice and clean. So I'll show you guys here. Let me turn the key on so we can show you all the lights it's got. Let me pull this out so the fog lights come on. Boom, there's the fog lights. Let me show you guys that. So there's the running light on the mirror. Obviously that's a signal. It's like those are the three lights in the, in the um, grill that I added. Kind of gives it a cool look. You know, coming down the road, Truck is all lit up. Like I said, we got the cab lights up at the top. Those are looking good. I could have swore he had one of those out. Yeah, see that that second one over there, it, like one side's working. I don't know, I think that bulb is funky. Gotta ask him about that. But yeah, these, I did not install. These came on the bed. This is a very nice bed. It's a CM brand bed. Very good quality bed. It is really nice. Any video of the truck, but I got pictures of this build. When I upload this video i'll try to edit in some of the pictures some of the progress photos i have but we ended up after we body worked it he wanted it rafter lined and that's when i first got introduced to doing the rafter liner this was the first truck, truck. but as you can see up oh, that door is locked but i'll open this door it got rafter lined all on the inside everything so we did the rocker kind of like what i did on the dodge here earlier we did all the big you know, 20 inch rims. I think the tires are like 35s. It's a stock tranny, stock geared truck. I told him, don't go really bigger than 35s. You don't need bigger than 35s. I mean, the wheel well, it does have kind of a bigger gap on it, but I don't think the truck looks bad with this wheel combination. We did do some spacers on it. He didn't get really the back, he didn't really get the offset that he had wanted when he ordered them. So we did throw on some hub centric spacers. They're expensive, but they're the best spacers you could buy. Um, if I remember when I upload the video, I'll try to uh, include a picture of the box that the spacers came in. I think the guy's out of Texas. Real good guy. They're good spacers, but they're pricey. I bet you these spacers were almost a thousand bucks. I think they're two inch hub centric heavy duty spacers. But this truck took a lot of work, a lot of time. A lot of people helped me. You know, my buddy Andy, my cousin Charlie. You know, just a lot of hours. The guy, Mike, you know, super patient with these us. These are rafter line. Originally, these were just, you know, plain. They were just smooth plastic. I was like, Mike, we got to rafter line it. You know, 
make it match the truck, you know, all those little details, all those little details, man, when people come to the shop and they see this truck, I get people asking me about it all the time, like, oh, where'd that truck come from? And you know what? It, it's satisfying to say, I built it. I built this truck. You know, like I said, it wasn't me by myself. I had help, support, you know, my family, my wife, the guy that owns it, everybody, you know, they're supportive. The long hours I put in, the time I put in, the time they're here helping me. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great to look back and say, look what we did, you know? Just wanted to show you guys. Um, these are something I just did. He had built these racks, these side racks here. So these just actually got a blast of Raptor liner done about a week ago. Um, he just wanted them to match, so I just scuffed them and just, you know, went over it. That stuff is great. That Raptor liner, you can basically spray it on anything. Uh, he's got a special tailgate piece that he's working on. It's in the back there. It's sprayed. He's got some hinges and stuff he's going to make for it. But, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a... Oh, yeah, and it got, got a 4-inch exhaust on it. Uh, besides the tuner and the exhaust, it's a, it's a stock truck. It's actually here going to get some glow plugs. It needs some glow plugs. It needs some other maintenance and stuff. It's been giving him a hard time starting up cold. He's been having to plug it in a lot, and then his block heater went bad. So he got a new block heater, got a coolant flush, got the racks done. Now it's going to get uh, glow plugs and under valve cover harnesses and actually point test. And sure enough, I was not getting the ground from the PCM. Check the wire. Wire had good continuity. The wire was good. You know, everything was working. If I grounded the relay myself, the relay would come on. I could get the glow plugs to work if I just ran a jumper right from the negative on the battery. So if I went from that negative on the battery over to the back post right here on the glow plug relay, it would work. But from the signal from the PCM, there was none. So we ended up, uh, I just got the PCM actually back on Saturday. I had taken the PCM out. I got a hold of a company out of Florida. Uh, I think it's like PCM Direct. PCM out, shipped it to them. They uh, put it on a simulator, boom. They found some capacitor that burns out and shorts out the circuit board, affects the ground for the relay. You know, they probably see it all the time, but yep, yeah, they repaired it and I put it in Saturday. And Saturday morning here, it was nine degrees. It was cold. It's the coldest it's been in a, in a few weeks. And I put the PCM in it outside, freezing cold, put it in. Got it all hooked up, hit the key on, had my uh, test light on the other side of the relay where it's supposed to get energized, and sure enough, hit the key on, I got my ground. Once, you know, I got a little heat in the engine, it was roaring, it was running good. Before, that relay was not doing anything, it would, I don't care, it would not start. It, it, it could be 40 degrees, and unless it was plugged in, it would not start, so... We got that all settled up. About the truck, show you about it, show you some of the stuff that I've done in the past, you know, that's been worked on here and, you know, let's do a little, uh, little car review. So I appreciate it and I'll get back with you guys soon.